the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, Grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. It is Friday, March 26, 2021. Did we get that date right? Yeah, March 26. <clears throat> okay, Friday. And today's gospel is a continuation of the readings we've been having for the past few days, um, taken from St. John. So today it's going to be taken from St. John, chapter 10, verses 31 to 42. And as I had been saying in the past days, St. John, uh, in his gospel, um, has written quite extensively about the, the fact of Jesus identifying himself with God the Father, right? That he and the Father are one, that he is the Son of God, okay? So there, there's a lot in St. John about those exchanges that he has had with the Jews where Jesus affirms his divinity and his relationship with God the Father. And today is no different. It's just another scene we are being given, but with a, with a twist this time, where our Lord tells the Jews, if I do not perform my Father's works, then do not believe me. They remember they were still challenging his credibility. <clears throat> they were still challenging his credibility. They were still questioning whether he was really the son of God. <clears throat> so one way that our Lord retorts in this uh, exchange is this. Well, if you know, uh, if you do not believe me, says, so if I do not perform my father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, then believe the works so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. That the Father and I are one. Okay? So our Lord is telling them, you know what? <laughs> uh, in the same manner that he did not believe I mean, the Jews did not believe him from the very beginning, right? Remember when he began his public ministry, when he read in the synagogue the prophecy of Isaiah, and then he said, well, this prophecy is being fulfilled in your hearing right now. So right from then, they already saying, what? Isn't he the carpenter's son? Isn't he the son of Mary? Isn't he our neighbor? Wasn't he our playmate in our own neighborhood? And then our Lord already said, back then, three years before this, he already said, well, you know, no prophet is, um, is uh, how's the saying again? Huh? No prophet is without honor, except in his own country, right? In other words, no prophet is honored in his own place. He is more honored and respected elsewhere. Well, you see, these people, these are the same people who continue to doubt Jesus' claims. All the way to the end, this is already, he was in Jerusalem here, remember, and talking to these Jews, getting ready to, well, uh, perform his, uh, his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. And still, three years afterwards, still these people could not believe that he was the Son of God. And so he says, you know what? Okay, if you don't want to believe everything that I've told you, perhaps just look at the works. Look, I perform miracles. Look, I, I, uh, I preach to you, you know, so many ways. And I, 
I perform good works. You could at least believe those things if you don't want to believe me as a person. Because everything I do, everything I said came from the Father. I do the works of my Father. See? So at least believe the works. And maybe if you believe the works, you will come to understand that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. You know, this, just imagine, just imagine this in a more human way. Children, children normally reflect things they learn from their own fathers, from their own parents. They do not only have uh, the genetic components of their own parents. They don't only look like their parents, right? But in plenty of situations, they even act and walk and talk and do gestures that are very much like their parents. And why is that? It's not only because they grew up in the same household, but, you know, there's plenty of influence right there that parents have on their children, rubbing off of the uh, you know, children's behaviors and actions and the way they do things and the way they behave in public. See? That is why many times children can be identified by their behaviors and they say, oops, you know what? Yeah, that one is a Kleachko. You know, <laughs> because he or she behaves like his or her parents, his or her dad or mom, right? Families, children, many times are identified by their behaviors. And they can tell, people can tell that, yes, this daughter, this son is living up to the standards of their parents, is doing what their parents are also doing. You can see very well, you can see very clearly, they belong to one and the same family. And many times without even opening your mouth and identifying yourself just by your looks and your behaviors, it's easy to tell. Oh, yep, you belong to this, you belong to that. Right? And that's what our Lord is saying. That's what practically our Lord is saying here. See? Look at what I do. And it's unmistakable that what I do can only be identified to my heritage, my parentage, so to speak, eh? can only be traced back to my Father, who is God, because I do the works of God. And the same thing can be said about the devil. I mean, anybody who subscribes to uh, evil and the devil, well, what do you think are they going to do in life? What, how do you think are they going to behave? <laughs> In life, right? They are also going to be manifesting the works of the devil, which is what? All the vices, all the sins that you could imagine uh, are possible for anybody who <laughs> emulates the devil. But for anybody who wants to live up to his reputation as being son of God, as being a daughter of God, a child of God, will try to emulate the works of God. Will try to live up to the virtues that reflect the goodness of God and that rubs off of us in our souls. We will reflect that. And we will be proudly walking about, chin up, saying, I am a son of God. I behave like God my Father. I try to imitate the virtues, the holiness, the sanctity of God, my Father, who said, who said through Jesus Christ, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. See? So we, we tend to manifest and express in our own behavior the fruits of sanctity. Because we learn this from our Father. 
because we we are intimate we have a relationship which is intimate with our own father god in another part of the gospel our lord says what by their fruits you shall know them by their fruits you shall know them meaning by their works you will get to know who they really are inside of them okay if they perform good works then they must be good people if they perform bad things then they are bad people it's as, as easy as that right if they come from a good tree they will become good fruit if they come from a bad tree they'll become sour right sour fruit not good to eat you'll spit it out of your mouth so that's what our lord is saying here well you know <laughs> look at what i do Look at my works, look at my behavior, look at my manifestations publicly. If you don't want to believe me as a person because my credibility seems to be low, <laughs> at least look at my works and you're going to definitely arrive at the conclusion. If you are honest enough, you're going to arrive at the conclusion that, okay, yes, he does the works of God. Okay? So here... You know, we can we can use this as a way of gauging our own our own way of life, our own behavior. Okay? Can we also make that claim that we are sons and daughters of God? Can we make that claim? Can we be like Jesus here who will say, if you look at my works, you will realize that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Okay? Can we also make that claim that we can say, well, you know, look at how I behave. By my behavior, you will see that I carry God in me, that I have God in my soul in grace. Because that's what it is. If we live up to the virtues, if we obey our parents, if we... Uh, live the virtues of order, honesty, integrity, um, uh, good use of time, and everything that we've been teaching you, <laughs> eh? then that is a reflection that you are performing whatever is the spirit that drives you inside. If it is the spirit of your Father God, then you will perform the works of your Father God. But if it is the spirit of the devil that occupies you and you are obsessed or rather possessed by evil, well, that's exactly what you're going to express out there. You're going to be committing sin left and right. And you're going to be, per, you know, uh, uh, um, doing all sorts of vicious things instead of virtuous things. Okay. Eh? Because you cannot hide that. You cannot hide what's inside of you. It will always come out in your behavior. It will always manifest itself in your behavior. You can never hide it. That's why it's easy to tell. It's very easy to tell who is in a state of grace and who is not. It's very easy to tell who are the people who are close to God and those who are not, just look at their behavior. Okay? So our external behaviors tell a great deal about what the state of our soul really is. If we are really in the state of grace, if we really belong to God, or we belong to the devil. So let's be very, very careful and particular about this and we do not you know be careful also about just being showy right just <laughs> trying to show we are goody goody once in a while because you know what that's not sustainable that's not going to last you may succeed once in a while to try to pretend you are good but hey it's a pretentious action it will always uh, 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 disintegrate and fizzle out uh, uh, later on right because only, only 
a, a person who is truly grounded in God and in virtue will manifest behaviors consistent with what is inside of him. If his behavior is just for show, sooner or later, he will not be able to sustain it. Why? Because it's not coming from a sincere expression of what is inside of you. See? So sooner or later, the goody-goody actions will disappear because you cannot sustain it because you're just pretending it is not true. See? So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Here is where we have to constantly examine ourselves and examine the motives of our behaviors and really ask ourselves, why am I acting this way? Why am I doing this and not that? Why am I being vicious and not virtuous? Why am I not consistent in the way I behave? Why can I not sustain the good behavior that I start but I'm not able to continue doing? Why? Why, why, why? And if you ask yourselves these questions, it will always point back to what you have inside of you. Am I really, am I really reflecting what is inside of me? If God is really inside of me, then my behaviors should be godlike, should be virtuous, should be acts of holiness. But if God is not inside of me, that emptiness will also be reflected in the emptiness and shallowness and uh, uselessness of my actions. Because my actions will be fruitless. They are not going to generate fruits of goodness and sanctity. They will be empty, devoid of any meaning, devoid of any significance, devoid of any contribution to anybody else or to anything else. Because there's nothing inside that inspires your behavior. You might as well just be a robot. Right? Because there's nothing that inspires your good behavior. You're just complying like when you're told to do something your parents told you to do something do this okay you drag your feet and go ahead do it you're not doing it willingly you are not doing it out of genuine obedience you are not doing it out of real love for God you're just doing it because I was told to do it see it's an empty fruitless unproductive behavior which could have which could have Produced in you a, a, a fruits of sanctity. It could have sanctified you a little bit more. It could have brought you closer to God. If that work that you did, that obedience that you expressed was a genuine obedience, a sincere obedience that was a fruit of your sincere and, and, and truthful relationship with God. But if God is not in you, and God is not inspiring your behavior, then whatever goody-goody behavior you perform is fruitless, useless. It doesn't bring you any closer to God. It does not contribute to yourself and to others. It doesn't do you any good and doesn't do anybody any good. Okay? And that is why people get tired of doing good works. They get tired of it because <laughs> it's unsustainable, because it's insincere. It is not sincere. Eh? Why? Because there's nothing to inspire them inside to be sincere in the good works they're doing. Because they don't have God. It's only God inside of you through grace. Eh? God residing in you through grace. That will inspire you to do good things. If God is not really in your soul, if you are not in a state of grace, you will not be inspired to do anything good. And that emptiness inside of you 
will be reflected in the emptiness of your behavior, in the aimlessness with which you do things, in the unproductive nature of anything you do. Okay? So let's bear that in mind. Let's bear that in mind. And that's exactly what our Lord is trying to say here. Because our behaviors are a reflection, a mirror of what is inside of our souls. Okay. That's it for us. We will go. And uh, today, by the way, is uh, abstinence day. Okay. For those who are 14 and above. Okay. Let's remember. It's uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. It's abstinence day. Okay. And we are just, uh, well, a week away. Okay. It's going to be Palm Sunday now. Right. This coming Sunday. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Palm Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be Holy Week. Okay. Well, folks, we will see you next week, hopefully. And wishing you here a happy, happy Friday and a happy weekend ahead. Bye. 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 Our Ava is busy. Okay. Bye-bye now.